everyone and welcome to the School of Education and Social Work. My name is Jane Fenton and I'm doing the introduction today because I'm the Associate Dean for Learning and Teaching across the school. I'm a social worker by trade but my role is to look after the learning and teaching for all of our disciplines in the school and the three main undergraduate disciplines that you'll hear about today are primary teaching, community education and social work. So who are we? Well, there's me and my role is to chair the learning and teaching committee and to be responsible, to make sure the programmes are running well and to sort things out. Um, we have then a, a, some staff from the different disciplines and also some real life students who are here to answer your questions and talk to you and maybe to give you more of the truth and less of the spin. Not that I'll be given any spin, of course, but OK, Gemma, can you move on? So what do we do in our school then? Well, we're actually very proud of our school. We cover the professions, so we're a professional school and that makes us a little bit different from other things like maybe fine art or history or even science because we all become registered members of our disciplines even as students and that may, means that we have certain professional standards to keep up right from the word go. We also go into professions where we make a difference to people. Transforming lives is one of the, the university's main values, but it isn't just rhetoric in our school, it's actually true. We go into schools, we go into community organisations and we go into social work, social work agencies and we work with people, sometimes people who are having problems, um, sometimes families, all kinds of different settings and we make a difference to people and you'll do that even as a student by going on placement and there's lots more about placement that's a unique feature of our programs. Um, you'll also learn and work alongside students from other disciplines from the three programs that I spoke about just now you'll work together with those students in first years but you'll also you might have a chance to work for example with nurses or medical students depending on the program that that you're on and I have to say that our students really do make an impact in the city of Dundee when we go out into different agencies some students undertake projects for those agencies um, for the community education fourth year fair for example you can see the difference that that those students have made to agencies um, okay Gemma could we move on seems to be taking its time. Ah, yes, OK, so that's kind of what we do. And do we do it well? And the answer to that is yes. And you can see us there in the rankings. I don't need to go through them. And year on year, the rankings are different, a little bit of variation, but we tend to do very, very well overall. So we're, we're proud of that. Some of these rankings come from what's called the National Student the National Student Survey that students undertake in fourth year and that you will also undertake in fourth year when you talk about how your course has been for you. So it's student perception influences a lot of what of, of how we rank. Um, and as well as those big surveys, you'll also get a chance to evaluate your modules year on year in your programme and the programme staff will take on board what you're saying about that if they can and make changes. There's a student rep structure also so that your voice is heard. We really want to hear what our students are saying and what they're telling us about their education. Student voice is critically important to us. OK, Gemma. So the three programmes that you'll hear about today are our MA Honours in Education and Primary Teaching, our BA Honours in Community Education and our BA Honours in Social Work. And as I said in first year, all three programmes come together and two of the modules that you do in first year, you work together as an entire cohort. Now that has massive benefits as you learn about each other's profession. It has benefits to you as well as you're forming your own professional identity. And so when you're talking to people from other professions, 
you're becoming more and more aware of your unique role as a social worker or as a teacher. So that's very important. Then as you move on through your programme, you will hone that identity with more and more discipline specific teaching. Um, and you can see kind of there just a little snapshot of what each of the programmes really are about. And as I said, st the staff that are here today will tell you in more detail about each of those three programmes. OK, Gemma. And the strengths across our programmes, one of the things that we always are very highly evaluated on is our pastoral care. And what we mean by that is that every student has an advisor of studies and that person's there for you on your student journey. Um, you'll have arranged meetings with them, sometimes in groups, sometimes individually, but they're also there for you to contact if anything goes wrong or if you're struggling at all. And, and that le the level of care that we give there to our students reflects our kind of professional values and ethos. We want new professionals who care for the people they are working with. So we try and replicate that by caring for our students. We have fantastic partnership links locally and internationally. And locally, for example, through our placements, lots of the agencies know Dundee University, know our students. We have a good reputation, so they are happy to take our students on placement. And we have, of course, professionals from the field come in and talk in our classes as well, so that you hear really from people who are doing the job. Probably the most unique part is that we combine the theoretical academic teaching with those practice placements. And, and so what happens there on a placement is that you actually go out as a student working in that agency. So through your programme, for example, for the MA education, you actually go out into a school and you work alongside a teacher. And each year that experience becomes more and more, you become more and more autonomous, I suppose. That experience becomes more and more rigorous as you go on. In social work, it's the same thing. You go out into different social work agencies, community education, similar. So that is a, a lot of your learning is done out there in the world of work. And our students often say, you know, what's the most memorable thing about your course? Students often say the placements. Yes, the, the, the learning in the university is fantastic, but the placements are, are really the thing that stands out. I also want to say that employability outcomes for our courses, employ employability figures are excellent because our students go out, they make contacts in the field. As I said, employers know our students. Um, and so when it comes to getting a job, it's not unusual for us to be at graduation and student after student after student is coming up and saying they've got a job, um, which is, is fabulous for them and for us, of course. And then those students often become our placement educators, our practice educators of the future. So that, that's really fantastic to see. And one thing I want to say as well that's not on this slide is that our we, we, we won't inst try and instill one ideology with our students. You'll get lots of different views on things, lots of difficult issues, ethical dilemmas, things like that, that you'll really be able to get your teeth into in the classroom. We really encourage good discussion and good debate. So if you're the sort of person who quite thinks you might quite like that sort of discussion, you'll probably enjoy our courses. So that's really our strengths. I think we're on the final slide now, Gemma, maybe. Or second to last one, maybe. This one is about placements abroad. And I'll not say too much about that. Obviously, that's really been on hold for the last 18 months. But as things open up, we will again be looking at, at um, reinstating those connections that we have abroad in all, in all programmes and um, opportunities for, for that kind of study. So that's something to look out for, for as well as the world opens up. And I think that's it, Gemma. Is there any more? The one thing I want to say just before we go on to the individual programmes is that our school is actually merging with the School of Social Sciences and the School of Humanities and we have a year of work to do before that happens but next August so when you come to start your programme will probably be your programme will be in a different school. Now however that makes no difference to the programme that you sign up for that will be delivered as per our pers perspectives as per 
your expectations. So it's a structural change that I just want to, really want to tell you about because it will be the school of something else. But as far as what you do on your programmes is concerned, nothing will change in that regard. And I'm happy to later on take questions about that if you want. OK, so now over, I think, to the ME education. Well, hello everyone and um, good afternoon, good evening, whichever one it is at this moment of time, it's a difficult one, but hello um, and welcome to the, the education. I'm Sharon Tonner Saunders, um, teacher to trade previously and lecturer uh, with a speciality in music and digital technologies and intercultural learning. So thank you for coming along to hear what we do in the School of Education. And I've got two lovely students with me today who are going to be into the final year, who are going to talk about what you can see whilst you're on placement and what other opportunities are available. Okay, next slide please, um, Gemma. So what is it? It's an the degree that you come to do is an undergraduate degree. It's a four year degree where you would be doing four years at university and then to become a teacher that gives you your degree to become the teacher. But to become a teacher, you have to then do a one year induction um, which you get paid um, to do the one year induction. So you've got four years at university and one year to become fully registered with the General Teaching Council of Scotland and then you become a teacher after that. It's for anyone who wishes to be a primary teacher, anyone who has that bit where they want to make a difference to young people's lives, anyone who gets the buzz out of, you know, you want to teach something, it doesn't work the first time, but you've got to think of different ways to do it. And then suddenly the penny drops and that child's like, I can do that. And that's because of you, you have changed that person's life. You've taken them down a route, you've maybe given them opportunities that they would never have been given before. That's what teaching's about. So that's what primary teacher's about. It's about changing people's lives and getting something at the end of the day where you go, yes, I enjoyed that day, even with all the stresses that are within there. And you're working with that age group of three to 12 years old. So you can be working with children from the nursery setting all the way through. Um, lots of different settings in school where you could be working in rural schools and um, very large schools with large classrooms. So there's lots of different settings within there. That's what makes primary teaching exciting because every year you don't know what classroom you're going to get, you don't know the setting that's going to be there. So it's always changing and keeping you on your toes. Next slide, please. On our course, right, so I've just had a primary teacher, majority staff are primary teachers, and we're also doing research and scholarship. So, for example, my research is into intercultural learning and intercultural learning is looking at ways where we look at our identities and where we work with people from around the world. I look at digital technologies and how could we use them effectively for teaching and learning and also look at music. We've got other lecturers, we've all got our bit where we enjoy focusing on. And so there could be people like outdoor learning, there could be people like mindfulness, resilience, there's lots of different avenues that people explore so that when you're there, you're going to get people who have researched into things and they bring that into the field and they share that with you to enable you to become the teacher that you're going to be. And you might come along and go, oh, that's interesting. And you become like one of them and you know, narrow down into some of the things that you're going to do. We've got a very well established ME programme. I did it many years ago, but it wasn't called the ME programme, but many, many years ago. And there's still many similarities from what's there, which is grounded in preparing you to become a teacher and preparing you for the eventualities and different scenarios and experiences that you will have when you become a teacher. Within there, we look at it in different ways. We look at the pedagogical aspect of it. So we'll be looking at the behaviour management. How do you manage a classroom? How do you be, you know, manage behaviours within a classroom? We look at the different curricular areas that we have so that you're ready to teach music, PE, drama, maths, language. There's so many different curricular areas. And as a primary teacher, you've got to be able to do all of these areas. So we make sure that you're prepared for that. You've got your education studies and placements. And within there, we're again looking at how can we prepare you for all the placements that you are going to be getting every year as you go through the course? And I'll speak about placements in a little bit. If we can continue, please. 
I do like someone else clicking on my slide next. It makes life so much easier for me here. So on the programme, we've got a variety of modules that you will cover. Now, Jane mentioned in first year that we have this um, shared whole school module, so I'm not going to go into that one much more, but it's a wonderful way of working with other professions rather than just seeing primary teaching. We're primary teachers. We're in this little box. We're all by ourselves and you get the identity of being a primary teacher. You also get the identity of being one of a profession of many different types of profession working together to make a difference to young people's lives. So it gives an understanding of how you can work with other people and you've got these shared visions, values and aims that go along with that. So this bit we've got the working together. We have where you can have a little specialism. So with the little specialism that's there is can be that there's modules from other areas in universities. For example, I have a student um, last year that did British Sign Language she was interested in that. We have then um, students that will do modern foreign languages and um, geography. So we've got specific ones where you can actually go to different modules that you get to choose in your first year. So you get to choose one of these so that you can have, have an interest or have a little bit of a specialism in that area that you could then take to the teaching profession. We then have in second year electives. And the electives are where you can then focus on a specific area. So again, it could be ICT, you're interested or you need to know more about it because you think I need more more time in that um, subject area, then you could opt into an elective there. And then there is a variety of modules that we have over the course of the year. Also, theory and practice is always embedded in it. So when we're looking at theory and then you can think, OK, when you go out and practice, the connections are made together so that you're never just thrown into practice. It's always about making connections between what you read and then what you see and what you do on practice. Can I have the next slide, please? I'm trying to go as fast as I can for the time that we have here today. So we're on the one where I'm going to get Sophie to join us today. So as you can see, the uniqueness of the University of Dundee, and I think this is what attracts many people to the University of Dundee, we have placements in every year of your study. So you're going to have a placement, as you can see, for six weeks in year one, and that normally happens in January from then. So you prepare, we then start preparing you from January for the placement. In year two, we have a shorter placement, which is in the middle upper stages. And in that one, it just keeps you getting back into school and know for that passion that you have. But we have, which we'll be getting, George is going to speak about in the next slide, is the learning for life placement, which is very unique that we have. We then have in third year, where the placement you'll see, the weeks are getting longer, so you're getting more time, and it's within the early years in nursery, and then in fourth year, your longest placement, you choose. You choose the stage that you feel you've not had experience in, or that you think, I this is the stage that I would like to you know, spend a little bit more time in my final placement on. So Sophie, can I put it over to you to give us a little bit about your experience of some of these placements, please? You have one minute. <laughs> um, hi, I've not got long, so I'm just going to talk about um, why I chose Dundee and um, the placement experience. So I'm just about to go into my fourth year. Um, I think the main difference, the reason I chose Dundee over the other unis is that we get placement in first year. So in first year, February of first year, you have a two week block. It's very well supported. Um, where you're observing a teacher, you're in a school, you're getting to know your class and then you return back to that same class for a further four weeks in first year um, to do some more independent teaching. And I don't think any other university does um, placement so early on and gives you that responsibility so early on, which I think makes a massive difference. I've even had teachers in schools say um, to me and other students that it really Dundee students um, are much more confident when they're in fourth year because they've had progressive placements every single year um, so yeah you get I think it's two full days responsibility in your first year placement um, and then second year is kind of um, an opportunity to solidify that and then in third year you go down to early years and it gets longer and then in fourth year that's when you have your longest responsibility so I definitely say when you're considering what university to choose really think about placement because placements where you realize if the career is for you and where you get to apply the skills for modules and I don't think I would be as confident going into fourth year if I hadn't had that placement in first and second year that often universities don't get. OK, thank you very much, Sophie. Completely agree with that about it preparing you for that final placement, having the progressive nature that goes there. So thank you very much. 
And right, now we're going to jump over to Georgia and we have this unique, what we call learning for life, which um, happens in second year. And in second year, you have a placement that you undertake if you stay in Scotland, this placement would be in an educational setting, but not in a school. Whereas if you decide to go out with Scotland, then you can go to a school somewhere else or an educational setting somewhere else, so like Camp America, etc. Now we've had people that they go to, we've had to Bali, we've had Australia, we've had South Africa, and we've had just up the road at the Macmillan Centre in Dundee, the various ones, but I'm going to put over to Georgia to give you just some ideas of what's happened. Um, so the learning from life placement for me, or more specifically knowing that I could kind of go abroad was what swayed me towards Dundee. Um, and like Sharon said, six week placement in your second year um, and you can go pretty much anywhere apart from a mainstream Scottish primary school. Um, and I quite like the flexibility of that um, and the personalisation that comes with it. And um, so a lot of people in my year did choose to go abroad. Um, I know some people went to work in orphanages and outdoor education centres in places like Malawi and Canada. Um, some people also went to international schools to teach, um, some people in Europe, but also as far as Australia and New Zealand. And there is also some funding available depending on where you go, um, which is always a plus as well. Um, but like Sharon said, some people were just down the road and um, going abroad isn't for everyone. Um, I know some people worked with charities like the Maggie Centre, Food Banks, Bernardo's, um, and there was someone that worked at a horse riding centre for the disabled. Um, so there really is something for everyone to choose. Um, and it's a good opportunity to push yourself out of your comfort zone and um, to go somewhere new or to try something new. Um, but it's also quite a good opportunity as well if you're not from Dundee to spend some time near home. Um, so yeah, just like I said earlier, it is very flexible and it is very personalised. Thank you. Thank you, Georgia. So the flexibility and that personalisation that comes in second Wait, year. Wait, and I don't know if people can hear you because I'm still live. You're still live? I'm live now. <laughs> OK, right. Okay. Thank you very much, Georgia. So with that flexibility that's there and the personalisation that comes in second year and what it gives you is that opportunity to see that an education is not all about just being in a primary school. There's uh, opportunities within the local areas and within Scotland for you as a primary teacher to take your skills and knowledge and take that transferable skills to other places. So, for example, Dundee Science Centre, or it could be that there is a world of opportunities where you can then do teaching somewhere else in the world. Can we move to the next slide, please? So that's teaching, primary teaching. It's a place to be. It definitely. We are Hogwarts. We are certainly the Harry Potter Hogwarts um, School of Education at the University of Dundee. Highly recommend it. So many other opportunities are there that know they're there for you to embrace and take to make learning a wonderful one for you. Do you have any questions? And if we don't have any questions, I will possibly then move on to the next person and we can use the chat area to take the questions whilst the next person is presenting. So Gemma, if you want to move on. Thanks, Sharon. Hi, everybody. Uh, I don't know if I'm live or not. Ah, I'm live. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, how can I follow that? The Hogwarts uh, experience. I don't know if I can, but I'll do my best. Uh, so yeah, and I just I don't think anybody said about the Q and A, but there is a Q and A box uh, for any any questions that you might have during this presentation, and we've got the, the students and others on hand to answer any questions in the live event Q and A. So uh, yeah, maybe I should mention that before I begin. So my name is Alan Mackey, and I am here to talk to you about community education. Uh, what is community education? There is uh, some people I think who don't know what we do. So just to give a quick outline of what we do, a very brief outline is that you know we work uh, in and alongside communities to affect progressive social change. That's in a nutshell. But we tend to work in the most marginalised communities uh, and with the most marginalised populations in Scotland, the UK and beyond. Uh, and our job is really to have an impact alongside these communities, addressing issues of social injustice. And the curriculum and the practice placements that we provide uh, kind of reflect this. So our work is 
and our work, I think, is on a slide that Jane introduced previously. You know, our work tends to fall into what we call the three domains of practice, and that is youth work, adult education, and community development. But the work is education focused, and we are educators, and we work alongside communities to provide education in these domains of practice. So, anyway, I hope that's uh, a good point, kind of uh, outline of what we do. Uh, can I have the next slide, please, Gemma? Thank you. So yeah, just to echo what Jane has said previously as well, is that I, I think it's important to get this across, is that you know we offer a very supportive approach to students coming on. I know for us in community education, particularly a lot of our students come from non-traditional backgrounds. And so I think it's important to emphasize you know, that we do offer a, a really supportive environment for students who come on board, uh, especially in first and second year, uh, where you will have enhanced personal tutor support, what Jane called uh, an advisor of studies. So, so I myself am an advisor of studies for many of our students. We offer that kind of not only the pastoral care, but we can also offer some support when it comes to academic practice, uh, because I think a lot of our students who come on board uh, sometimes lack a bit of confidence when it comes to things like writing essays or uh, doing presentations and what have you. But yeah, so I just wanted to kind of give further emphasis to that. Uh, next slide, please, Gemma. Thanks. So how do you learn in the community education program? Through a, a, a huge variety of ways. Again, we, we emphasise really a kind of a rich kind of blended approach to how you learn and how we learn alongside one another. Uh, so a lot of the work that we do is lecture based, but we also put a big emphasis on class based discussions, presentations. We have videos that we provide. We've got a really, really great online learning environment where uh, we provide a great deal of resources for people that you know, when you're not in university, you're able to kind of engage in learning materials uh, while you're while you're at home. Uh, we have invited, I think, just like Sharon said in her on, on the teaching program, we have professionals from the field come in to talk to students, and we have a lot of kind of workplace learning, which I'm going to come on to talk about. Group work activities, independent study, and there's a big emphasis in our program on research and action learning, what we call inquiry and action learning. So that's arming our students with the skills to be able to go into the communities and to conduct research alongside the people they're working alongside in order to kind of find out what's going on in people's lives. Because community education, if it's based on anything, is about centering the work on the lived experience of the people we work alongside in the communities that I was talking about earlier. Uh, next slide, please, Gemma. So how we do it, it's a four year program leading to an honours degree in community education and you get a, your full professional endorsement from the Community Learning and Development Standards Council, which is recognised is a recognised qualification in both Scotland and the rest of the UK. Now, what you learn in, in the classroom is, an, uh, as I said on the slide here, is an eclectic mix of critical educational theory, but also it's we have a, you know, we bring in a, as a big interdisciplinary focus in terms of the learning that our students do. So we bring in learning and education from sociology, social policy, politics, political theory, critical theory, social justice, and much, much more. But with the, the emphasis is always on what do these big issues mean in terms of our practice in the communities that we work alongside? And I've got an example of a module that I run just to kind of give extra kind of flavor to this. Next slide, please, Gemma, thank you. And I like Sharon was saying for the, for the for our teaching students, it's the same in community education, a big focus on placement. So our students go out on placement in second, third and fourth year and the responsibility on your placements grows each year, just like our teaching students. So and in our first year, I should also say as well, just to add to what Sophie was saying about, you know, we recognise that, you know, students want to get their teeth into uh, practice as soon as they come on board. Uh, one of the modules that you're, you're engaged in on, our, on your first year in our program is in a youth work agency where all our students go into the field immediately, if you like, and learn alongside practitioners uh, uh, in a youth agency called the Hot Chocolate Trust. But placements are across a range of statutory and voluntary agencies, as it says in the slide here. Uh, and our students could, you know, I'll go out and they could be working with children, young people, older people, adults with disabilities, offenders, some of our uh, students go on placement in prisons, women experiencing domestic abuse, a huge melange of different kind of agencies that our students can go into the field uh, and, and, and learn alongside. You'll be on placement, you get assessed on both your practice and your written work, so you'll be 
graded on your the work that you do in the agency by a practitioner there, but you'll also be you'll also have written work and a big emphasis again on reflective practice. So how do you reflect on your practice in the field? And so that will that kind of work is graded uh, by us in the university. And as I said before, each year uh, you're on placement, you know, your responsibilities will grow, your skills, capacities and practice develop, you know, you're learning in the classroom, you're taking that theoretical learning into your placement and you're uh, bringing them together in a, a rich symbiosis, if you like, of learning. So, uh, so yeah, so I think it's, uh, yeah, excellent. And just to say, this is just an example. I know that uh, our, some have had feedback from other students on open days that they like to see that, you know, what are the kind of things that you might learn upon? So this is just an example module that I designed last year and I got really great feedback from our students. So you can see the kind of theoretical input on the right hand side, you know, some of the kind of things that you might learn alongside us is things like place and space and critical consciousness, belonging and stigma, uh, social justice theory, decolonization, intersectionality, some of the kind of big issues that are floating around at the moment. But again, I want to emphasize, you know, we don't learn these for just learning these sakes. The point is about how can we bring in these this kind of rich theory and what does it mean uh, for uh, for our students when they go out in placements? Because they all have relevance to the practice that people are undertaking. It's about being able to reflect on these big ideas and think about, well, what does that mean for the communities that we work with? Uh, so, yeah, just to give you a, a bit of a flavour of uh, the diversity of the kind of topics you might learn when you come to study community education at Dundee. Uh, next slide, Gemma. Programme highlights, you'll gain a recognised qualification. You'll study the conceptual ideas and knowledge that underpin professional practice. You'll develop and utilise your professional skills in the community, as I said, on placement, which is 40% of the course. You'll study alongside students and other professional degrees, like others have said already. You'll be aware of the latest policy and practice developments within our field. You'll develop, as I said, there's a big emphasis on developing research skills and undertaking independent research. So that makes a big component of your fourth year placement, where you'll, be, you'll go into the communities that you're working within and you'll conduct some research alongside the people that you're working alongside really giving you those a, a kind of rich uh, theoretical uh, input into developing your own research skills as a practitioner. And you'll become equipped to contribute to the future development of both the profession and your own practicing career. And as Jane said already, you know, our students have got a fantastic record in tip when it comes to employability and, and getting jobs uh, post uh, university. Next slide, please, Gemma. And yeah, don't take my word for it, you know, as uh, as we were talking about, I don't want to put my own spin on everything. You know, we've got uh, really great feedback from our students and there's some quotes up there. Uh, I have an opportunity to discuss social injustices that I've been passionate about for some time. Uh, and I know our students really value the, as I say, the research component of our degree programme. And there's a YouTube link there where you can go in to YouTube and actually hear some of our students talking to the camera. So uh, all spin removed from me. <laughs> uh, next slide, Gemma, please. Ah, yeah. I know I said already about the T domains of practice, but you can see from this slide, you know, these are some of the kind of post university avenues that our students have went on to work. So uh, there's a whole uh, landscape of practice that students can go into local authority, third sector organisations, community health, youth work, housing, community development, social enterprise and uh, and often go into working abroad and NGOs to work on some of the in some of these kind of uh, big organisations which are at the forefront of combating issues of social injustice. But really put into, you know, there's lots of there's lots of avenues you can go into with the skills that you would learn in our degree, especially when it comes to engaging communities, uh, as I say, rooted in the lived experience of the people who are in these communities. And that's something I really want to emphasize and I think is a big selling point of our program. Is that the last slide, Gemma, or is it uh, will I stop talking? Yeah, and my email is there, so you've got my email address. If anybody wants to find out anything more, any more information, I've had to speed through this a little bit, but please do drop me an email. I'm happy to get back to anyone with any questions they might have. Or if you're just coming across community education and community learning development right now and you think hmm, that might be something I'm interested in, then please just drop me an email and I'll happy to have a conversation with you uh, over the interwebs. All right, thanks very much. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions, please, I'm, I'm here.
hand back over to Jane if there's no questions. But thanks for everyone's attention and good luck. You're on mute, Jane. Thanks, Alan. OK, um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the third of our programmes, which is the BA Orders in Social Work. First slide, Gemma, please. OK, so um, what is social work? And there's a very sort of fancy um, definition up from the International Federation of Social Workers. It can sound quite intimidating, really. An academic discipline promoting social change, principles of social justice. Um, and all of that does sound, as I say, fancy. But social workers are very grounded and they work with families and people in trouble and children. And when they do that face to face work, they bring all that learning. They actually bring their learning about social justice and human rights and respect for diversities into the work they do. So it's a fusion. And I think you've heard that from the other disciplines, too. It's a fusion of that theoretical knowledge and good practical skills, because we can't just have well-intentioned people who are people persons and good at doing that but without the actual knowledge base that you need to be any one of our professionals and um, social work in particular in this case. So can we have the next slide Gemma? And so wh why study it? I was a social worker, I've been at the university for 15 years, so I was a social worker in fostering and adoption and then in criminal justice with Dundee City Council um, for a long time, um, longer than I've been at the uni. Um, and I can say that I loved social work and I know I did leave to come to the university to do a bit of research and to look into some things a bit more deeply, but the actual practice was very rewarding, can be difficult, um, and you do need those people skills as well. I don't want to downplay that, um, but very rewarding. And you have a positive impact on lives. Sometimes that positive impact isn't obvious to see. There's not a huge headline story in something like keeping a family together rather than the children being removed. But that's the success stories of social work. They don't make the headlines. Only the occasional tragedy does. So helping somebody not go back to prison, helping a family stay together, helping an older person move happily from home, say, through hospital to care, for example, an absolutely traumatic time, helping somebody manage that. None of those are headline stories, but my goodness, they are so important to people's lives. Um, so as well as doing that, you are you join a profession you join a profession that's regulated by the SSSC and um, so you have that professional status um, and throughout your work you are promoting social justice and you are helping people and that sounds quite naive I want to be a social worker because I want to help people no that's the best reason in the world really okay Gemma if we move on um, I've just got a slide here about the entry requirements. Nobody else mentioned that. So just to say you can get this information on our website. I'll not dwell on it, but you can see there what, what we ask in our entry requirements. And I do want to say this bit about international five or intermediate two maths is something that comes up for people as a bit of a sometimes a bit of a barrier. But we do actually need that. And the reason that we need that is we need social workers who can do things like read research, not huge amounts of it. We're an applied discipline, but you do need to be able to know what people are writing about social work. What is the research that's going on? And you need to be a little bit savvy to with with statistics, really, to um, understand that that isn't a huge part of the course. It's just a it's really just a requirement that you have the capacity to think like that if required. What's really important if you want to become a social worker and apply our course is your statement in your UCAS form. Read a little bit about social work so you can say from my reading I or something like that. Show that you're a curious person who would make the most of the learning opportunities you get here because you can't just sit in a class and expect it all to come to you. We want active engagement. Sometimes that's a bit of reading about things. 
Um, yeah, and to talk about your motivation, just why do you want to be a social worker and show that you understand what that is. OK, so if we could move on. Thanks, Gemma. Here's the a kind of an overview of our four year degree. And there you have year one, semester one, working together in values. Those are the big joint modules that people spoke about and the elective module. That's what Sharon said. A student can pick something from elsewhere in the university. So you might do British Sign Language. That's a great example. Or you might do uh, something in politics or whatever. There's a selection of things that you can choose for that one. Then in second semester and first year, bang, you're right into your discipline specific stuff. And for social work, we look at power and politics and practice because social work isn't just about the interpersonal stuff with the person or the family. It is about wider society and all its influences. You'll do a fantastic module on relationship building skills. We have a lot of input from our service user and carer group here at the university, which is just as it sounds. It's a group made up of people from different areas in social work who use services and they'll come along. They um, are involved in a, an interviewing activity that you, you do in that module where you actually get to practice interviewing somebody as, as a as a social in the social work role, I would say because that can be quite nerve wracking. So we do things like that to help you gain some initial confidence. And the formation of social work, that's really about the history of social work and why it is the way it is now. And a bit of a critical engagement. Is it the way it should be or maybe not? We look at that too. Now, we'll not go through each module, but you can see that's the general spread. Then in third year, that's your first assessed long placement. Like education, we have a short three day placement in first year and then a short three week placement in second year. But these ones in green are your long and there is, that's when your practice is assessed and you go out into an agency. You're there for a long time. You have a practice educator and you start with supervision to operate as a social worker. By the end of that placement in fourth year, the target is that you're operating as a newly qualified social worker. That's the bar. And then in semester two and fourth year, you'll undertake a dissertation and that gives you the chance to specialise in an area of your choosing. Whatever your topic is, it might be something that's sparked for you on placement or it might be just an area you've become interested in. So that's the span of the four year degree. Can we have the next slide, Gemma? Our teaching and learning approach, again, it's that fusion of practice and academia. And we have lots of lectures, we have small group and class discussions, tutorials, reading, online resources, a diverse range of assignments. So sometimes an assignment is, can be a presentation. Most of our assignments are essays. Um, we have um, one exam, but I'm not sure if that will still continue after COVID. I'm not sure about that. Um, but those that sort of diverse range of assignments so that you'll find something you're good at. But most of it is, is written work and in essay form. The, a growing emphasis on a little being a little bit more autonomous as the programme goes on. So you have to get used to looking up things to read online. We have fantastic access to all the journals electronically, so you can sit at home, find the articles that you need. We have a brilliant library on campus. That you can go in, browse the books. Service user involvement, as I said, not only our service user and carer group, but we also get other service users to come in and talk to students about how it feels to be on the receiving end of social work services. And again, interprofessional work, so working with students um, across the school, but also in nursing, for example, out with our school. OK, next slide, Gemma. Um, I don't think I need to say more on this, but there's the kind of places that you might work on placement. Children and families, um, criminal justice. As I say, that's my background. Older adults, people with physical and learning disabilities, mental Ill health and people who misuse substances, both in statutory services. By that, I mean these services are underpinned by legislation. They have to, ex they have to exist, the duty on the local authority to make them exist. So criminal justice, for example, where you're writing reports for the court and that sort of thing. Um, and then the voluntary sector, which are more support to agencies that have grown up where you sometimes do the best social work um, probably that you'll do in your life where you can really build relationships with people and really hear about their lives. OK, next slide, Gemma. 
And just, and everybody has sort of touched on this, and I want to say this as well, that our staff group in social work, uh, you could Google our names in social work and things will come up that we've written or presented at or research that we're involved in. You'll actually read books and articles that are written by the people who will be teaching you, um, which is indicative really that all the lecturers have something to say, something that's good enough to be published. Um, so you're, you're, that's kind of, I suppose, the standard of teaching and learning that, that goes on in social work. And we're a research active team. You can see an example there. Um, and top 10 in the UK for social work in the Times and the Sunday Times Good University Guide. And that's quite good because there's about 100, and, I think it's about 107, 110 um, UK social work programmes, so that's not bad going. OK, Gemma, next slide. And what our students say, here's some, some um, quotes, but I want to just at this point, just to introduce Rachel Ross, if we could hand over Rachel, who's a student on our programme, and she wants to just say a little bit about her experience. OK, Rachel? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, oh, everyone. Great. So I'm Rachel and I'm a final year social work student. So I just started my final placement today. So this is my long one. And my last placement was in a voluntary agency and I absolutely loved it. I, I love getting to know people and working with people. And I found the voluntary agency, I got more time to spend with people. It was amazing. And this one is a statutory one with children and families and I, I'm already enjoying it. So I found, I know Jane says you need to be more than a people person, but I find that's the foundation of it. You yeah. need to have good people skills to be a good social worker, but then you build upon it. So uh, I came from, I was going to do another course completely and then I changed my mind and do, did social work. And I'm telling you, it was the best decision I ever made going to do social work because I love working with people and helping them change, you know, like helping people benefit from way things in their lives. And if that if that sounds interesting to you, then Dundee is definitely the place for you because you get your support the whole way through it. You're never alone. I find if anything's on your mind, you just drop an email and it's sorted. Uh, but if anybody has any questions, just reach out to me or if you want to put it in the chat, I'm more than happy to answer them. Brilliant. Thanks, Rachel. No problem, Jane. Um, so, and so there, that's a great accolade. Thank you, Rachel. That's brilliant. Um, and and they're a nice balance. Rachel had a place in the voluntary sector now, statutory children and families, so underpinned by law. Um, so it's fantastic to hear from Rachel. And there's some of the things that our graduates say. Um, again, I won't read them. We're quite short of time, but just a flavour of, um, you know, how people have found the course. Maybe move on to the next slide, Gemma, I think. I think we're probably coming to an end. Yes. So any questions at all? Um, no questions in the chat whatsoever, so please be brave and type a question in if you want to or ask us through your microphone. We're, we're here for that. So we'll give a few minutes to allow that to happen if anybody has anything. Maybe nothing, Gemma? Do we draw things to a close then or? Yeah, I think, I think that's the end of the first session now. OK, OK, so thank you very much, everybody, for attending. I actually don't know who I've been speaking to. I don't know how many <laughs> of you are there, but I hope you found that useful. If you have any further questions, drop any of the disciplines a line, uh, uh, you know, an email. You can find the email addresses, the academic lead or Alan gave his email address to people. Please just drop us a line. Don't be sitting there with unanswered questions. More than happy to answer them. OK, thanks very much, everybody.